this video, I'm going to cover a few of the different ways rotation can be used in OCalc Pro for users that are just starting out. Some of the rotation options function a little bit differently depending on the item that's being rotated. So some additional clarification is going to be provided here just to help the user sort of get their bearing with which rotation options work in different ways. So I have here a structure already built with some different items that we're going to be rotating. So I'm just going to start by zooming into the top of the pole here and selecting this um, pole top pin that we have. So if I'm selecting this pin here, I can see my different attributes along the bottom of my screen in my data entry window, one of which is rotation. Now for this item that's just sitting along the top of the pole, if I put in a rotation value of 90 degrees, you'll see that it just rotates not only where on the top of the pole it's placed, but it also individually rotates that item. And because that item essentially spun 90 degrees, it also rotated the spans that are attached to it. One very important principle in OCalc is essentially the trickle-down effect of different rotations. I'm going to do a control Z just to undo what I've done here. So in the hierarchy arrangement that occurs in the inventory panel, that parent child relationship that's indicated by this little dotted line and sort of the tucking under of different items, that is what's going to indicate when you have to be aware of the trickle down effects of adjusting rotation. So by adjusting the rotation of this pin, it's also adjusting essentially the rotations of these different spans. Now, if, again, I select my pin and rotate it again by 90 degrees, and then select one of these primaries. This particular primary is now going off in that direction. And if I look at its attributes, it says its rotation is five because that's its rotation initially. And here, even though it says that the rotation is 5, if we look at that primary over here in our inventory, we'll see that its rotation is 95. So that is the summation of its own 5 degrees and then 90 degrees from its parent. So when you're looking for an item's overall rotation, that's indicated here in the inventory. If you're looking for an item's individual rotation, that can be viewed by selecting the item and looking under this rotation attribute down here in your data entry window. Now, performing a control Z again, just to put it back, I can look at the same rotation properties related to this cross arm. Now here, this cross arm is the parent item of both of these pins and essentially, for all intents and purposes, the grandparent item of all of these primaries. Now, if I adjust the rotation value for this cross arm, which is currently set to zero, if I rotate that to 90 degrees, you'll see that everything else attached to it also rotates. So here we have the same effect where we can see that its overall or cumulative rotation is 95 degrees. That's the direction that span is going off towards, but its individual rotation is still five degrees. Now I'm going to do a control Z again. Now, to sort of circumvent this trickle-down effect, there is a shortcut that the user can use. Say, for instance, this cross arm really is rotated uh, an additional 10 degrees. I can select that cross arm, and under rotation, I can type in IND equals, and then put in 10 degrees. Now, what that does is individually rotates, or independently rotates, that cross arm and doesn't allow that trickle-down effect to happen. This can be seen by looking here. Notice that this primary's rotation does not say 15 degrees because that trickle-down effect is not occurring. Only this cross arm was rotated that additional 10 degrees. So this is one of the shortcuts that a user has to sort of be able to work around this trickle-down effect. I'm going to do a control Z again and just sort of move down the pole here to look at some of the other items and how rotation affects them. A spool, for example, this item here, has rotation, but it also has the additional attribute called side. I mention this because in the case of a spool or a three bolt or an insulator that occurs along the side of the pole here, 
these two attributes essentially talk to one another. You'll notice that the rotation for this spool is zero. But if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that zero is over here. So our spool is actually on the 270 degree side of our pole. Because if this is zero, 90, 180, 270. Okay, so we have to be curious as to why the spool is sitting on the 270 degree side rather than on the zero degree side when its rotation is set to zero. And the reason is the side attribute here, which is currently set to field. The side attribute has three options, street, field, or inline. Now field side corresponds to 270 degrees, so that makes sense. Our side being set to field automatically puts that spool here on the 270 degree side of our pole. Now if we were to change this to street side, it actually flips over to the 90 degree side because street side always corresponds to 90 degrees. Now how do I get this spool on the 0 degree side of my pole with rotation set to 0? You can change your side to inline. And what that does is places our spool here on the zero degree side of our pole. Now, interestingly, if I were to then come into rotation and put in a value of 270 degrees, our spool ends up back where it started, but it also essentially spins about its center 270 degrees, which is what makes this a little bit tricky. You have to be aware of your rotation also affecting your insulator spinning about its center. So I'm going to do a control Z and then another control Z and another control Z. Oh, one too far. Okay, so now my spool is back where it started. Essentially, as a user, you want to be sure that you're aware of the relationship here between rotation and side. The rotation is relative to what your current side is. Okay, so if I change my side to inline, I know my spool is over here, and then I change my rotation to say 180 degrees, my spool ends up on the 180 degree side of my pole, and its spans are rotated as well. So again, this is a situation where if you're just trying to reposition the spool without changing the position of the spans, you can use that IND shortcut. So I will do Control Z just to put everything back. And then if I want to just change the spool so it's from this side of my pole over here to my 180 side, I am going to independently rotate it. So here's the tricky part. If you only adjust this rotation, it's still taking this field side into account, and your side is essentially your starting point. You're rotating it a certain amount from the side. So the best way to think of it is your side is where you start. Your rotation is how far from that side you're going to deviate. So if I put in IND equals 180. I end up on the 90 degree side of my pole because it's rotating at 180 degrees from the field side, which is 270. So 270, another 180 degrees, puts us back at 90 degrees. So you can leave this alone to prevent your spans from moving. We just have to sort of do the math in our heads and say, all right, well, if I'm starting on my 270 degree side, and I want to be on my 180 degree side, the best thing for me to do is to use IND equals 270, and that will put us ultimately where we want to be, and our spans are still located in the correct position. Now if I were to look at this 3 bolt here, you'll notice that it has the same setup. It has a side, and it has a rotation, and these two items are going to talk to one another. For items like this riser here, your rotation is actually called your installation angle. They're essentially the same thing. 
it's just where around the pole this riser is going to be placed. For example, if I change this to 270 degrees, it places our riser on the 270 degree side of our pole. Now for rotating things like spans on a pole, that can be done either on each individual span under its rotation attribute, or if you wanted to adjust a whole group of spans, you can use our Top View Gain Geometry Editor down here by selecting this little G button. You're selecting all of these spans in this group, and you can put in a different angle, so 170, to rotate all of those spans at once to that angle. So this concludes just a brief overview of some of the different ways that rotation can be used and just some shortcuts to keep in mind when manipulating rotation.